Can everyone hear me okay? Well, that's, that's the wrong question. Who can't hear me okay? <laughs> well, how would you know? But I guess it's better than saying you were okay. Are you a dad now? I am such a dad. <laughs> Super dad. That's actually uh, my Twitter handle. I'm Mark at superdad.com. Okay, very awesome. Let's get started. I think we have a really exciting talk ahead of us, and I can't wait to share it with you all. Before I even do that, i got to say something really important, and that's thank you. Uh, you all came out in the snow to spend time with us tonight to hear from myself and Ernesto, and thank you for your commitment to just being a part of this group and supporting the group. So can you give yourselves a round of applause? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all right, I like that energy. We're about to have a really good time tonight. It's about to be a party. So tonight we're going to talk about uh, have to take a second look at DART. All right, my name is Mark Thompson. You can find me online at Mark Texan. That's on Twitter. And then if you want to find out more about you know, my writing and other things that I'm working on, you can check out MarkTexan.dev. All right, a little bit about me before we get started. I like to code and teach. And I would love to go more into my background about why you should be really excited about tonight, but we have so much to get through that I really just want to focus on that. And something really important is up next. All right, brush yourselves. Lots of cuteness. All right. So I was asked if I was a dad, and I am. This is my son, Wesley. He's two years old, and you know, he wanted some glasses. Thank you. I forgot to do that. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, he wants some glasses when we were at a restaurant, so being engineers, we figured out how to make us some glasses. And then there we are. <laughs> All right, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. All right, everyone loves a really good story. Now, back in October of 2011, the web was largely formless. And what I mean by that, if you remember this time, jQuery and Dojo were in a head-to-head -head battle for supremacy in the browser, right? The libraries just started to crop up. Angular made it for its first time into the dark, causing this war with, with backbone and with spine and with knockout. And everyone was trying to find a better way to write JavaScript because here's what happened. The pendulum started to shift from the uh, thick client, excuse me, a uh, thick server, thin client, where all your logic is on the server side and you have these like really like thin clients, someone said, hey, what if we start to put the logic on the front end and people wanted to take the web more seriously? Woo. Exactly. <laughs> and then, bam, Dart was announced by our friends or corporate overlords, however you want to call them, at Google. Or I'm just kidding, no, our friends at Google, right? So Dart gets announced. And, and what was the whole point of Dart? Well, Dart came out as a transpiler, one of the early, early transpilers. Now, we heard a talk last month about transpilers, and we talked about this idea that you have something like TypeScript that allows you to write more structured JavaScript, but then that code can get transformed into JavaScript that can be run in the browser. Well, Google said, hey, we can do this, and this was way back in 2011, and they released Dart to do that. And this is so exciting. Guess what happened next? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Nothing happened, happened next. Nothing really happened. Well, not much outside of Google. So internally at Google, Dart was kicking butt and taking names. They're building really scalable apps with Dart internally. And the teams internally really love Dart. But outside, guess what you have? It's an enthusiast language. You know that language that you keep telling your friends, like, you just got to try it. I promise if you try it, you'll fall in love. Please, please try it. It's one of those languages. And the, the overall community just isn't loving it. And that's pretty sad because Dart was really a cool idea way back in 2011. And then something happened. The world changed. May 2017, Google announced a really cool framework for building mobile apps called Flutter. Now, when Flutter came about, everybody started to say, well, what do you, how do you write Flutter? How do you use this really cool new hotness? And Google was like, 
Remember Dart? <laughs> yeah? How you like me now? And so Dart just comes out of the background like, yeah, I'm back everybody. And then, now we have Dart making a resurgence. But, I'm gonna tell you that there is still more to be told about this story. And I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is it worth considering Dart for your next web project? Considering it for your teams? Now, I'm not gonna try to convince you any way, uh, yes or no, but I want to present you with some information to help you make that choice for yourselves. So what is Dart? Well, Dart now, remember it started off as a? Transpiler. Okay, what did it start off as? Transpiler. At the Transpiler. Now Google has rebranded Dart. And now they call it a client optimized. Optimized being a very key word that we'll keep coming back to. A client optimized language for fast, fast, fast app on any the web? Platform. What? No, any platform. Uh oh. Sounds like bullshit. Wait, there <laughs> this talk is being recorded, sir. <laughs> on any platform. Now, and when they say any platform, here's what they're saying mobile, web, desktop, and back end. So this is starting to sound like a dream. A dream that we've heard before. <laughs> Let's be real. It's a dream that, that, that we've heard before, right? <clears throat> you know, that you could have an app, like Meteor, Meteor is a great example for this, where you could have code that you can use the same language across your stack. Now, Dart's approach to this is a little bit different than what we saw with things like isomorphic JavaScript, where you could like, use the same library all the way through and it just kind of worked. Dart has a different approach, but it, it, it addresses problems in a unique way, I think. So let's talk about some of the Dart features. Let's, let's see what, what, what does it have going for itself. All right, one, and this is a big thing now, so everyone should be rejoicing, a sound type system. Now, why should you be rejoicing? Because this is what really is the hotness. That's where everyone is saying, oh, go to TypeScript. Check out Flow, because you want the types. And why do you want types? That's the question you have to ask next. Why does this even matter? Because dynamic typing has kept all of us employed so far. Right? We've been writing JavaScript and it's been working. Why do you want a sound type system? Well, here's the big win that you get. Static analysis. And let's break down just a little bit what that means, right? When you're writing your code before you even even before full compile time, you can find out there's errors. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if, how many of you have ever done this. I know I have. I'm going to raise my own hand. Okay? I've written JavaScript that went to the browser and didn't work. And I didn't know it didn't work until it got to the browser. What? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the baloney. How is that possible that I would do that? It's me that we're talking about. All right? That explains it. <laughs> that explains it. That's pretty good. All right. But static analysis is in Dart. And then you can also get compile time errors. Those are really important things. Remember, JavaScript itself is not actually compiled, it's interpreted. And that's a different process, okay? Object-oriented. Now, JavaScript itself is not a classical language. Regardless of what your friends who write ES6 tell you, a class in JavaScript is actually syntactic sugar, right? It's just some constructs on top of the prototype. I know, blasphemy, but it's not really a classical language. But with Dart, you get a classical language with like object-oriented features that you grew up with. The ones that came with the C++, the ones that came with you know, your Java, the ones that you love and that you miss. They are back I in your life today. Room, yeah. <laughs> no, I know what they were talking about. It. Yeah. OK, C Sharp. I'm just saying, you know, my friends at .NET, C Sharp, object-oriented with class, classical structure. And then here's the, the thing that I love, love, love about Dart and why I consider Dart familiar constructs. And I don't mean constructors, just constructs, like parts of the language were familiar. So jumping into Dart, I was able to find my way around pretty quickly because it borrowed a lot of the best things that I loved about JavaScript and a lot of the things that I cut my teeth on when I wrote Java full time. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to identify this code. I'm kidding, uh, 30 seconds just Look through it, and here's what I want you to ask yourself as you're reading it. Do I know what's happening? Do I know what's happening? That's all I'm asking you to do. And by 30 seconds, I really mean 10 seconds. Counting to five. 
Right. I'm going to say yes, and he's going to prove it. Okay. Sounds like a plan. You see this this nice uh, word right here? Boy. Boy. What? You, so in the position where you see here, I'm going to do you one better because it's hard to point. It's hard to point. <laughs> okay. So in this position right here, considering that, well, that's a little, that's a little uh, soft there. Okay. There we go. And then let's. Okay, in that position, what do you think that the main and void, what's the relationship between main and void there? Return type. Return type. A return type. Awesome. So what does that make main? A function. A function. Oh, wow. Sounds like some professionals are in here. I love it. Okay, well then, okay, fancy people. What's happening on right here with, with, with the next block? What is that? For loop. For loop. I like that energy. Looks good to me. <laughs> I wonder what's happening right here. What does that do? Oh! All right, I'm about to I'm about to get you now. You ready? I'm about to get you. What about this fancy word for it? What, what's happening right there? String interpolation. Yeah. So what's happening is we have a string, and then the value of i plus one will be displayed concatenated with this string. Now, JavaScript just got this in ES6, which is like, you know, four years ago, but I'm just saying. It's pretty new for JavaScript, right? <laughs> and it's pretty cool because I'm not using pluses. That's the alternative, mm -hmm. to have to use pluses. And you know when you have a lot of variables that you need to concatenate with the string, it's just not that nice to look at. It gets a little unwieldy, but your string interpolation saves the day. Now, guess what the amazing thing was? Now, some of this, of course, is because of your previous experience with programming that you could identify these constructs. But also it's because you know JavaScript and that a lot of the stuff looks familiar to you, even though you had never seen dark code before. Maybe, I don't know, you probably have. Some people may have seen dark code. I don't wanna make that assumption. But in case you had not seen dark code before, this is dark code that you can jump right into and figure out at least 80% of what's going on. If you've never worked with a language that has static typing, then you may not have seen the return type and known exactly what that did. But now you do. What the return type is what the output of this function, the type of the value will be. And what's the type of that value? Void. Void, which is not the same as null. Right? Void means no value at all. Okay. Okay. Very fun. See? Look at you professional darters. Is that what you call people who write dart darters? I don't know. I, th I think the community hasn't, you know, <laughs> matured enough to come with a name yet. All right, very fun. Let's look at this code. Okay, a little bit more code. Now people who've ever written anything classically, you already see some stuff, but even if you've written JavaScript, you see some stuff that looks familiar. Okay, I'm gonna give you your 10 seconds here. And by 10, I really mean three. Okay, let's jump into this one. <laughs> this one's a lot of fun. Mark's dad. Is he calling me old? Yeah. <laughs> well, someone asked me today, you know, about you know my age. I told them I live outside of space and time, and 109 is what you you mortals would kind of consider me to be. You know, if we had to count revolutions around the sun, 109 is about approximate. Okay. All right. What am I doing right there? What is that doing? But just this first part. Declaring a variable. Declaring a variable. Ooh. <laughs> oh, look at that. Declaring a variable. Excellent. Var. So what, you, what you're already seeing from Dart is some of the flexibility. Is that while it is a statically typed language, it has something really special called type inference. Other languages do, the, other languages do have this. But type inference, inference means that it can figure out what the type will be even though you put var on the left-hand side of the uh, equal sign. Based on what's happening on the right hand side, right hand side, the language will figure out what the type will be of that variable. Very powerful because guess what it allows me to do? Write less code. So instead of me having to write person space p, I can just write var. But there's something else happening that I find to be very, very interesting. What is this and what in the fun is going on? Constructor. Is that a constructor? Is it a function? Yeah. Or well, I heard someone ask a good question. New, a new keyword is usually. So there's no new keyword there, and and we've been we've learned 
that the new keyword in conjunction with a function call usually signifies that it's actually a constructor uh, being in, uh, instantiated right there. Well, remember, Dart is all about being optimized and fast and being productive. So the <coughs> compiler will do the right thing for you right here. It'll know the difference between a function and a constructor. So you have optional use of the new keyword in Dart. Optional. I was going to say, if it's optional, why would you ever use it? Then? How do you see it? <laughs> it's gone. That's what I'm saying. Well, then why make it optional? Uh, well, because it started there and they've since oh, removed okay. it. Right. Yeah, so, so, so that's a good question. He was, you know, he was trying to be like a smart act, but it's actually a good question. Why, you know, why is it optional? And why not just already have it? So when Dart first started, it did follow the paradigm of having the new keyword. Mm -hmm. And then over the last uh, year, they've done several releases that removed the requirement of using that new keyword. Yeah. Very fun, though. I mean, it's a little confusing when you first look at it because then you're expecting, because in JavaScript, the only way you can tell the difference between a function call and a constructor call is a new keyword. Only way you can tell the difference. Right? Unless you're using a class, then you might get a little bit of linting to tell you, but still. So you okay. remember, in JavaScript, a constructor is just a function with a new keyword. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting scared. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. The, the person that's being assigned to yeah. P, is that the class of person, or is it the method inside this class of person called person? Let's talk about it. Great question. So is this the, so what is this? Is this a constructor? Right? Or is it a function? What's happening? So let's dive in and figure it out. No side talking. I know all the answers. <laughs> all right. All right. So here I'll create my new object. Okay, let's look at my class. <laughs> let's look at my class here. All right. So I have a class called person. I have two uh, member fields here, name and age. And then down here, here's a really cool thing. Again, remember about being optimized and trying to be productive. We actually don't have to, this is actually a constructor on, on it's not mine, but you can't. Just in case somebody's not uh, seeing the video. Okay, so this is actually my constructor. And one of the funnest, best things that you're going to take a sigh of relief. The this keyword in dirt. In total, means what you think it means. <laughs> Meaning, if you come from a classical language, like Java, C Sharp, C++, something like that, you know that the this keyword means that it references the instance of that object. In JavaScript, you don't know what it means until you look at the call site. And then you still may not know what it means at that point. Because someone could have used uh, call, bind, or apply, or something like that. So it's a lot of drama. There's a talk that somebody gave about that before at this very meetup. Oh. I wonder who that was. It was <laughs> you should probably check out that talk. It's pretty fun. So now I'm saying uh, take the two parameters, assign them to those two member fields. A lot of fun here. A lot of fun. But remember, this doesn't feel optimized to me. I'm not going to lie to you. It doesn't feel optimized to me. If it feels okay, you know, it's not optimized. Well, Dart is really productive, and I really do mean that. So now I'm going to show you that I can take that same code that I just had and cut it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Final. <laughs> That's right. Java now. Immutable, right? Like I don't want this. I don't want the reference to change. So I'm gonna make that final. But, but look, look what I've done here. <clears throat> now I'm using the this keyword inside the parentheses where the parameters are listed. Okay. That feels a little weird when you first see it, because you're asking yourself a lot of questions. Am I working with an expression right now? Is something else happening that I'm not aware of? Well, actually, it's what's happening. It's allowing me to skip the assignment of those member fields. I'm able to shortcut that because this is kind of boilerplate code, right? When you have to do this dot name equals name. That's boilerplate code. And you want to be optimized and productive. So now what I can do is say, well, the parameter that comes into slot one goes to this dot name. Parameter that goes into slot two goes to this dot age. And done. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> I'll get you, Gadget. Okay, very fun. Now that we've looked a little bit at Dart, let's talk about. Uh, actually, before we, before we go to Dart for the web, I want to show you some more language features. 
I'm gonna do it on time because I really don't want to overdo it. Yeah, no, you good. I mean, Ernesto only needs like ten minutes, right? <laughs> 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 it's like yeah. talking after Mike. I mean, you know, your chances of getting to speak to Mike. You can keep it on. Mark, was, that a, was that a Bob <laughs> Cope the same? You're just showing us the bottom where you would have Mark. Uh, as a yeah. string in one eye, it's just that bottom that gets optimized. Great question. So, did I show you the, the same code? I omitted the top main function, right? So, that code is the same, okay. but I was showing the optimized version of the class. Okay. Good question. Thank you for clarifying. So, to you answer your question, you have up and after. Perfect. That's all I need. Just a quick question. In the constructor, there's no type defined for the parameters. Is there not? If you had something that's Additional, Could such you just, as like you're oh. adding in some parameters that's not part of the member. Like oh, the okay. So can I you see. just do string third parameter. So can I list types in this constructor signature? So meaning this area, right? So can I list any types here if I want to? Absolutely. I can list types there, and I can list things that are not going to be a part of you know like a direct assignment, right? But there's a way to do that too, and I'll show you how to do that. Very good questions. I like how engaged you all are. Can you all do me a favor, just because you're so engaged? I'm gonna actually get your right hand into a safe space, like next to you, just kind of put it up if you feel comfortable. You don't have to if you don't want to. Then get your left hand up, and then on the count of three, we're gonna clap together. One, two, three. Double clap. Woo, see, don't you feel good? All right. You can do that. So I'll, I'll tell you what I just did to you, actually. It's called kinesthetic learning, and so it's this idea that when you do physical <coughs> movement while you're learning, you can boost your cognitive pr uh, production. So, I just made you learn even better. I know! Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get out of here. <laughs> I tried to tell him. They don't want to believe me. All right, so... He's that guy from oh, he got younger. 106. 106. <laughs> Outside space and time. It was fluid. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a different day. That's right. Different moment. <laughs> All right, so here is some actual Dart code in an editor. Now, I'll warn you, though, that the Dart setup is a little bit more intense than I like it to be, to be honest with you. So if you're installing Node, and you're going to do like Node as your server-side code, you just install Node, and it comes with NPM and everything kind of built in. To get Dart to run, you can just install Dart by itself. But if you want it to run for the web and for other platforms, there's a little bit more to, to do it. I've already done those steps. So I don't want anyone to feel like you can just start typing, you know, in your editor and just like, hey, run this dark code, mark lie. I didn't lie. I just I finished all those stuff before. These are some of the familiar constructs that you get to see. So line three, we have use of the, the const, right? We're using const right there, meaning that the value in this primitive will not change. <coughs> and guess what? <coughs> Remember I told you about this idea that you have this static analysis? Okay. Now, I'm not even having to go to the command line to compile the code yet, right? Like the tools are just kind of working on my, in my favor, but I already see that, that things are broken. So if you're looking for some comparisons to other transpilers, well, you're starting to see that you get some of the same value in that tooling, right? I know TypeScript does this as well, right? If you try to make some things kind of weird, and if you have linting on, blah, 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 you can set that type of stuff up. But that's pretty pretty amazing that I, I get this built in. You saw my string interpolation. There are two formats you can use. If you have a variable or, or an expression, let's say you have an expression that maybe have a, has a dot in it or some other special characters, you use the curly braces like I have on line five. But because there is nothing but this kind of standard characters, I can just do a dollar sign right next to it and it knows to interpret, interpolate that string into the string. A lot of fun. Uh, this is a fun thing. Scope. This is a, a very, very JavaScript thing in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. right? That when you have a function inside of another function, that inner function has access to everything from the enclosing function. So if you have two boxes, the smaller box has access to everything inside the bigger box. Well, that's kind of what we're getting here, which is pretty fun that, again, it's what you recognize. You know about this from JavaScript. So you're not having to make so many new mental models when it comes to using Dart. A lot of fun. Uh, I'm gonna run this. I say a lot of fun again, a lot. You know who else does that? Apple. <laughs> they trick you into believing everything is good by telling you that it's good the whole time. This is something like you've never seen before. 
incredible space age polymer. This is the best we've ever done. This is the fastest iPhone you've ever seen. And you're like, maybe it is. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just tell you. I listen. I told you. I like to code and teach. Those are my two things. <laughs> so Mar's going to be teaching. I'm going to run this code from the command line. I'm going to type Dart, same way I would type Node. Okay. Then I'm going to type the file name that I want to execute. Okay, what's my age again? What's my age again? Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Wow. That's for you. Super, super knowing where I was going. Okay, thank you. All right, but if you see, here is my scope example. I can see outside, right? Meaning I can see outside of my curly brackets. So outside of my own electrical scope, I can see outside. It's pretty fun. Now, let's jump over to something new. You're like, man, Mark, I came to this talk. You're telling me JavaScript stuff. What about Dart? Well, let me take you there now. Okay, let, let's, let's go to Dart and let's get more familiar. When we look at Dart itself, there's some really cool things that you can do. Now, I've included the new keyword here because I want you to see that you could use it, but we're going to change up this code a bit to make it more Dart-like, the way that I like to write this code. So, lines one through five, I have my main function with a single line that creates a new person object and assigns it to the variable p. Then down here, I have my class definition for person, but on line eight and nine, I'm showing you an, another construct that's a part of Dart. You also have this idea of accessor uh, perm permissions here, right? So that underscore actually means private. Now, it's something you have to remember as you write Dart. But the underscore means that it's private. So in JavaScript, there's no such con you know, idea of this, really. right? Except for if you go down to the object level and set enumerable to false, then you might not be able to list it. I already know, Joe. I already know where your brain is. OK? But they, they do have the, the hash symbol down in class. Oh, really? So how, how many tools you got to install and use it? OK. Um, <laughs> OK. But so that, that means I could not do you know, p dot underscore name because the name is private. Okay. <coughs> Here's something really fun. Now, did you ask me, you asked me this question. Actually, you asked me this question. So here, I'm not using the this in the constructor right now. I'm showing you how I can do what's called an assignment list on my constructor. Here's what's happening. First and foremost, that's my constructor. Takes two parameters. I have a semicolon that comes immediately next. Then I can do the assignments as I please. But that, that's a colon. That's a colon. Not a well, uh, what did I say? Semicolon? That's I have a colon. colon. No, that's a full colon. No, no. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> okay, I have a colon right there. And then I have my variable, <laughs> my member field, and then the actual variable that I'm assigning it to. Okay. So this, so this, what, what does this allow you to do? It allows you to manipulate your inputs if you need to. So let's say you want to convert something to a double or to an int, you want to do some type of manipulation, you have that, but you can do it all in one line. Instead of having to create the function body with the block and blah, 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 who wants to write all that code? So this, this is how you kind of get there. Better, same words. I was more leading towards, like, let's say I had to pass a Boolean for whatever reason yeah. that I don't actually want to store. Yeah. Do I just say boo, blah? Like that? Boo, blah. <laughs> All done. But how does it infer the type if I need to use it, or does it not really, in, I mean, just infers it, I guess? You mean like that? That's also about it. I guess. So you could add that to name, for example. All right. And how would you do that? I mean, well, how would you try to string? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> how would you do any? How would you do anything? There you go. That's okay. Good oh, question. Oh, I see. Cool. Oh, question. Dollar name, right? Right. I have to put. Oh, dollar name. Yes, you're right. You're right. Look at you. See, look at you, the professional task. starter. Task. <laughs> I'm not passing. So the style should we put the colon on, on the next line? It's not like at the end of person. It's supposed to be at the end of person. That's VS Code style for Dart. Okay, so nice. yeah, it's just kind of working in VS Code. Uh, Dart has another <coughs> structural thing that's kind of, well not structural thing, a, a community agreed upon guideline. Convention. 
convention, thank you. Thank you. I got something for you. Hold on, I'm just saying it. Bow. That's good. Good to have that. All right. They really like for you to trail with, with the uh, following combo. I know. I know. I know. And, and I'll, I'll tell you why. We, that way it wraps on another. Who's giving this talk? <laughs> there you go. You see? That's, that's what they'd like you to do. So if you have multiple uh, parameters going into a function, they'd like you to put a comma at the end. Even trailing, a trailing comma, which feels really weird. It feels wrong to me still. I'm accepting it slowly, but it's a thing you have to get used to. But this is what you get out of it. And it really comes into play when you write code for Flutter because of the nesting of everything, which we'll see a little bit of that, a teeny bit of that at the end. Okay, let me, let me keep moving. That way we can get through some more things. Oh, one last thing with cascades. So one thing that I can do is, instead of having to say, okay, now P dot, you know, say hello, that's one thing I can do. But if I know I want to use a function right at the end, I can do say hello. Okay, cascading. So now, you see that? So I'm actually talking about the reference of the object I just created, and I just called it a function on top of that. But guess what I could do if I really wanted to keep, keep my life, you know, in this type of uh, format? I can do dot dot to string on top of this one. So if you have a, an object that you're, that you're constructing, there's a lot of functions you want to call immediately on that object, but you don't want to have to keep writing P or object dot blah, object dot blah. You can just do a cascade on initialization. I do this actually. So this, this is a good productive tip for Dart. Okay, I'm so going to speed up a little bit. P is still a person, though. P is still a person. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Good. That's a really good distinction. P is still a person, right? Still a person object, even though I'm doing all this cascading. All right. I'm going to move really fast through some of the. I'm going to skip this because I think I have like 12 minutes left. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking about nailing. I don't trust you. Okay. <laughs> hey, you have 20 seconds. You got uh, 18 minutes, Mom. 20, 25 minutes. You have 18 minutes, Mom. 18 minutes. I have to keep going. All right. Ignore him. Let's talk about null aware. This is something that's coming to JavaScript. If it's not already there, I know the specification got announced recently that they're trying to do null aware in JavaScript, meaning that you can write better code around null. It's a knowledge coalescing operator. Knowledge coalescing operator. And Dart is called null aware operator. It's already better. More productive. <laughs> <laughs> More productive. <laughs> okay, so I have this value. I have var val. Okay. Now on line four, I'm doing something very, very, very slick here. Okay. I'm saying if val is null, assign the value of val to five. I should name it something better. Hold on. I don't want to. How about this? So we do this and we do. Okay. That way. Better. Better. So if the value of foo is null, assign it five. If foo is not null, don't do the assignment. Now, you do initialization in, in JavaScript all the time. Some people will do the bang, bang, undefined, or blah, 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 to try to give it an initial value, depending on if this thing is, has a value or not. You have a lot of tricks to do to get around not knowing if something has a value. Or this could also be an if statement. Should initialize variable be null? Initialize variable, this is not initialized. Right. Non-initialized. It's just defined, right? Should it's, it be null? It's going to be null, yeah. What happens in JavaScript, right? Well, if I did some JavaScript, it's undefined, right? So in Dart, it's going to be null. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good questions. So, so you could do this, and then only double equals, mind you. Don't, don't be doing no triple equals here. There's no uh, type coercion in this. Strange character. Oh, oh, that's just nice. strange characters. So is undefined just gone in Dart? Yep. No such thing. <laughs> okay. Well, you see, this is the line four, and lines, of plural, six through eight, are the same. Which one are you going to want to write? I'm just asking, right? What's up? <laughs> right? So you're probably going to want to write the productive one. So that's, that's why I say Dart's productive. They built in a lot of features that support productivity. Okay. Keep it going. So I'm going to get rid of that. Then you can also do this really cool thing. So I, I do this quite a lot. <clears throat> so this, this, this null aware operator says this. Take the non-null one. Right? So the first parameter, so I would say if I put foo here, if foo is not null, take foo. Otherwise, take two. Like, like, give me the value of two. 
Okay. You see this a lot. And, and again, we do this type of initialization and things like JavaScript. And I'm not ragging on JavaScript. JavaScript is a beautiful language. I'm just telling you the differences, what makes Dart kind of special. Okay. And this is so special that JavaScript is getting this support. This is actually happening in JavaScript. Very cool. About time. All right. Yeah, it's like stage three or stage four. Okay, so but it's still in, it's still in stages. This is already ready. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna keep trolling. You're doing a great job, man. I live under a bridge. <laughs> Get it? Go. Don't troll? No, that, that was not good. Okay. Um, so here is collections, and Dart has support for proper collections. If you come from a Java background, C sharp background, for example, you're you're familiar with this idea of collections and the generics. So you get both of those in Dart built in. Okay, collections and generics. Generics will let you specify what the type of your collection, or what the type of the elements in your collection should be. That's what we're getting with this type of thing. So I'm saying that I want a list, but all the things in this list must be strings, which saves my butt, let me tell you why. Static analysis. If I try to put something that's not a string in this list, it'll let me know. Right, it'll let me know. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, please. So an int is, a, is an object, it's not a primitive like a, It's a primitive. But you can have, have the generic string. Isn't that cool? It's a type, right? Any, any type. It's a type, yeah. Yeah, but so the question was, but in things like Java, you can only put in the generics objects, right? Like, at least Java 1.6 was the last one I said. I don't know what's in the world now. The word's moved on. But here, we have a primitive in here, and, and Dart supports that. Very, very fun. So set is what you think it is, if you're familiar with the idea of set, and that's a unique collection, so no, no duplicates. Okay, you have your list, which is like an array. You can have any duplicates, you can have anything you want in there as long as it matches, okay? And let's say that I wanted something, you know, a mixed list here, I can do dynamic if I wanted to, right? So I can do that. And then that's gonna let, let me have uh, a non-homogeneous list, yeah. You have a union? Yeah. I don't know what a union is. It's like string or int. Oh! Uh, like that? I would assume so. Oh, hell no. Oh, oh. Hell no. Nah. Oh, well. <laughs> Dark White Pass. <laughs> I do so much other stuff. Pass. Okay. Uh, one thing that's, that's really cool, though, that you can do is you can do collection literals. Collection literals. So you know how in JavaScript you can do an object or if you use an object literal where you use your curly braces to create your object. Well, in Dart, you can also do collection literals. So I have the option here. So you have said that var people equals this. Okay, well, it doesn't like the emoji, obviously. But there you go. So that's a literal collection. You see that? It's just an array there versus me using the object. And you can do the same thing for map and set. Okay, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, I'm going to speed up just a little bit, show you... Here's some fun things that you can see. Uh, I showed you cascading already, but you can also have conditional property access. So username is null. So instead of my program crashing and saying cannot find is empty on undefined or cannot find is empty on null, it will tell, it'll return null instead from this, uh, from, from this property call is empty. It'll just return null. So what you can't, so now here's the problem. If you use this type of thing, you have to do if username that is empty <coughs> equals true. You have to you have to specify it, okay? Because guess what? Is empty could return true, false, or null. And Dart, love it or hate it, does not have this idea of truthy and falsy. Either you are true or you are false. Expressions that with the true or false. There is no sort of true. Okay, there's no sort of false. So it actually won't let me do something like this uh, that I that we've all done, right? If I do if username, when I run this, it's going to be a problem. The reason it's not a problem now. Can anybody guess why it's not a problem yet? It's undefined. Doesn't know it's tight. Doesn't know it's tight. You better go ahead, okay? You've been practicing. Bow. That's for you. 
Okay, very <laughs> fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it doesn't know what's type. So, so that's why the static analysis can't really tell you anything yet. Okay, because it doesn't know what type it is. Okay, now I'm going to fast forward in this talk all the way down to what you came to see. Dart for the web. Give it 10 minutes. I know, that's why I fast forwarded. See? Marky, we are on the same wavelength. Our namesake connects us emotionally and spiritually. All the best people, Mike. <laughs> so here's what you can do with Dart for the web. I built a little crispy app, really crispy. Let me jump into this. Make sure I'm in the right place. So I'm going to do web dev serve. Web dev is a one is part of the tooling for Dart. Again, oh, is that way at the bottom? You folks couldn't see it. Yeah. So I literally type web dev. It's a package that they maintain that is for serving your web uh, projects and doing web with Dart. So I actually wrote something with Dart. I'm going to show you it if I can find my uh, browser. Okay. Cool. Whoa. Cool story. Cool. The coolest story. All right. Let's go here and then let's do, what is it, localhost? Localhost 8080. Shabbat. Okay. Very fun. Hold on. Don't don't panic. There you go. Now you can see it. Okay. <laughs> Give me a movie. Ray. The Ray. You better quit playing so much. That's my favorite movie of all time. That's one of my favorites as well. Because it's the best. This is not the right one. Production. Yeah. It's the only one. This 1954 can go away. <laughs> All right, best action movie you have never seen. I'm not gonna lie to you. Watch the raid and then write me on Twitter thanking me for <laughs> blessing you with this movie. Okay, <clears throat> amazing. Redemption, the, uh, the raid, Barandal. That's the first one. That's the first one. Yeah, Redemption is the first one. Barandal second. Okay, so this is making an AJAX request to a third party, you know, API over the internet. This is not hard coded. This is over the internet, right? And I pulled some data, and I did the type of things you do in JavaScript. Let me show you how I did it. Let me show you how I did it. So first, what I think could be very interesting is to look at the, the project structure. You have your Fabrico or Fabricon, favicon, index.html, main.dart. Looks pretty okay. Is, is that too tiny, or, or is it obscure for anyone? Uh, no, no, it's good. We're looking just around checking all in. Oh, you said looking around his big head? Yeah. Like big, my watermelon head. I got it. your giant muscles. Man, tell me about it. It's really uncomfortable standing up here. Okay. Here's, how I, here's what I include. Look at line 13. Look, let, me, let me stand to the side so you all can see. Okay. Line 13 is, is really interesting. the show. Main.dart.js. So it gets transpiled into a JavaScript file for me. Oh. Okay. But when you go to the browser, here's what I love. <coughs> okay, so, 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 don't panic. Don't panic. I know when someone opens up a tiny, you know, window there, you, you panic, you won't be able to see it. I got you. I care about you all. Don't worry. I care. Okay, so if you look in in the browser, I have my dart.js, which is just like if you had any other transpile <laughs> language, yeah, yeah. they have their version of what they think is optimized. But here's what's really interesting. Main.dart is in here. Okay? And not only is it in here. Okay, there you go. Now, does that only happen in Chrome? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that, actually. That is the best question of the night. Sorry, can I re-ask that? What browsers is that supported in, Mark? No, it's a great question. Watch this. Shabop, shabop, shaboom. Wait, hold on. Mark. Yes? I don't have any hair. I have, I have no, no sense of what a hair is. So rude. Unbelievable. All right. He's a go, you don't see your hair. Okay, very cool. All right, there you go. No configuration for this. No configuration, works out of the body. So this is actually Edge. I don't know if you can tell by this tiny, beautiful icon. Uh, this is Edge, Microsoft's new browser, still supporting the breakpoints with Dart. Now, this is something I don't know the secrets of. I think Joe knows how it works. Source maps. Yeah, the source maps are our friend here. It does create a source map. So I'm able to create some actual web code. Now, let me take you into the code, and then let me show you some magic with literally like five minutes left. Eight, six minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna take it to the code and then show you some magic. 
Here's some code. Okay. No code. They have this code. One thing I like I, that I can do with this is I can structure my app like an application. Now, this isn't a design pattern that was recommended. This is the way I thought. Let me build an app inside of an object. Let me build it and then call app.start. That's just the way I thought about it. But now, guess what? I've encapsulated my logic into a class that I can then move around and import other classes and do some other stuff. Uh, one of the good things about Dart is that you get the full power of the Dart language. One of the bad things about Dart is that because Dart is not, Dart is not valid JavaScript. Dart is not valid JavaScript. Not like TypeScript, right? Like, like TypeScript can create valid JavaScript. This cannot. So I'm using some tools that I had to import from the library itself, but I had to do things a slightly different way that don't go the same way. Like, for instance, normally you call like document.querySelector and you have access to the document like really easily. You do stuff like this, right? That feels kind of normal. But here's what doesn't feel normal. Let me show you what, what, I, what I've had to resort to that didn't feel normal. I will upload this code so we can go through it like on your own time, but I don't want to go this line by line. Here's what didn't feel normal. Line 14. I did a query selector, then I had to cast it as a certain type of element. Now, what is that cast doing? Meaning, when you do a query selector, it returns the subclass or the parent class element, right? Because all, all HTML elements are returned from the query selector. You get the parent class element, but this was an input, so I actually want it to be cast as an input so I can call the functions and properties like text, value, etc. Now, why is this troublesome? Well, in JavaScript, you don't do that. You say document.querySelector, select, and then whatever you get back, you can work with immediately. No casting is necessary. Here's where Dart for the web is a little bit rougher around the edges, right? It's mature, but the experience is not the same. Okay, look at this HTTP request. This looks like the old school code that you wrote before we got things like fetch or things like, uh, what's that library everyone loves for Ajax? Axios. Axios, right? Of course, I can write my own Axios. There may be an Axios package for Dart, but this is what I had to write, right, to create this. This looks very much like the old Excel, was it? XML, XML, XML HTTP request, right? We had to specify all the steps. Not the same, right? It doesn't feel the same. It's asynchronous, which is beautiful, but, you know, it's a little weird. I'm not going to lie to you, it's a little weird. But here's what the value that you get, the productivity of all those really cool features that I showed you earlier. So once you get past the interacting with the DOM part, then you get to the real magic, which is the ability, which is the ability to do strongly typed JavaScript, excuse me, strongly typed programming, all the tooling, all the support. And now, let me show you the real magic, why you might want to consider it. Now, oh, come on, Mark, don't do this now. You can't see it. Huh? You said you can't see it? Now, if you can't see it, then. No, 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 I know you can't see it. I want you to see it, because I don't know what I'm looking at yet. <laughs> so, so this is... He was doing so well. This is exactly the life I, I want you to live right now. I want, want you to be in the dark on this one. Okay, here we go. I'm coming home. Okay. What's this uh, interface that you're in, Mark? I'll tell everybody everything in one second. I just really have to get my life together. Okay. I will, I'll explain everything as soon as I can remember the name of the folder that I put off my code in. Oh, man, Mark. Unbelievable. Who invited you here? <laughs> Second look. There we go. Good Lord. Okay, web. Okay, mobile. There we go. Ah. This just makes you look human like the rest of us. Yeah, I know I am. Okay. It's weird. Okay, let me show you some magic. So I've been talking about Dart. You saw Dart for the web. I showed you that you can run Dart on the command line, which means that you can write command line tools. But what if I told you that one other really important feature was that you could actually write native mobile apps that run at 60 frames per second with the same language that you wrote on the web and on the command line. But then it's also cross-platform, so you don't have to write twice. That's what the promise of using Dart in your team and all your stack is, is that you can actually go from the top to the, you can do web, server, everything. And there we go, what's going on? All right, let me just start this up. Very cool. 
I know, you can't see it. Okay, there you go. Well, this is dark code. There's your main function. Oh, wait. Somebody said, man, dark don't even have an arrow function like JavaScript. Forget this. It does. It does. Here you go. Here's an arrow function. Here is a class called MyApp that extends. So again, remember that you got polymorphism inheritance. Extends this thing called stateless widget, which doesn't really mean anything to you, and that's okay for right now. But you know, you can kind of see you got some, you got a, a constructor here, got some parameters, and we're going to put all of this. That's going to make an actual mobile app right in front of us, right? Like this is an actual a native mobile app going to be running on the interpreter. It's not going to be uh, a web view, right? It doesn't use the JavaScript bridge like React Native. So you're going to get high performance here. And you're going to get a native looking feel. So this is with zero code that I get that. Now, if you can't see what I have, don't worry. I care about you. There you go. So we have, we have a, a mobile app here. This is not a web view. This is legit, native, fast running code. And if we want to update this code, I know I'm out of time. Don't, don't whisper about me over there. I can hear you. OK. It's just an ASCO. He's starting to cry. All right. I was going to say this. That's all Android Studio? <laughs> yeah. <I'm... laughs> OK. Under children. All right, Ernesto, I care about you. And so my app does too. Well, wait, did you notice something that happened? Yeah. Did it update by itself without me refreshing the screen? Hot reload. Persisted the state. You better pay attention. I clicked, I clicked 27 times. And when it reloaded, it kept the same state. Imagine what this does for your workflow. Dart is productive. Dart can change the way you write code. It can change what your teams can do. All you got to do is be willing to give it a chance. All right, folks, thank you so much. I've been Mark Thompson. So, we have questions, right. comments, all that. Are we changing the group uh, meetup name? To Dart Art? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, so I'm just curious. Uh, you showed us a lot of stuff that uh, let us know how similar it is to JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, which is totally cool, and I think uh, it's certainly one of those areas where um, when you see a lot of the stuff that's coming to JavaScript and people put up these initial proposals to always have kind of a, what do you call it, like previously established art or whatever to show like how other languages are using it. I'm sure they draw on things like Dart and F Sharp and all that sure. stuff. But as an advocate, I'm, I'm certainly feeling that you are an advocate of uh, uh, people using Dart. I'm curious if you can tell us, like, what are the pain points about the language? Mm -hmm. Like, like, what is awkward about it? Uh, you should, you showed us all this cool stuff. Yeah. Again, it's very familiar to us, or, or, or sure. uh, uh, some of the newer JavaScript stuff. But I'm wondering, uh, specifically, maybe for JavaScript developers, uh, what's painful? Sure. Great question. So, what's painful about Dart to get started, or to you to, to do work? Right. What's painful? One is the setup. All right. It was. It was hard for me to understand why it wasn't a one button install for everything that I needed. Whereas with the JavaScript ecosystem for the web, once you install Node and you download a project that has a package.json, you got everything you need. You don't have to look for anything else because you can specify it. Dart has the same package manager and you can specify, it's called the pubspec.yaml, which will let you specify your packages. But I still, before that, had to install other things. Then with working for the web, there were so many times that I just wanted to write web code that I wished it just worked without me having to remember which library to import. There are a lot of things that JavaScript gives you because of its type nature with the, with the browser. So the document, for instance. Document is in there because JavaScript is for the browser to manipulate the documents. In Dart, I had to import an HTML package that comes with Dart. Then I had to learn how that HTML package interpreted the same things. Right? So that, that makes it sticky when you're working for the web. Right? And then if you're looking for a lot of the idioms that you get from JavaScript, things that you kind of want to be there, you know, there, there are some things where I feel like JavaScript is more elegant, the way it handles some things. Right? And so that's where I feel like Dart isn't the right tool. So let me answer the kind of the bigger question, right? Should you use this, and you know, from a non-advocate like you know, advocate point of view, should you use this? My answer is maybe. And if I had more time in the slide, I would have showed you that. It depends on a lot of things if you should use this. Right? One, how much time do you have? you have time to use new tools? 
right? What are you building? Is it something that you can crank out in a week with the web in just regular JavaScript? And it'll take you three months in Dart because you don't know Dart or because Dart may not have the capabilities, right? That's, that's, a really, that's a really important thing. And then, you know, what are you trying to build? And that, that's the biggest thing. So if you're building something where I say this, if you're building a mobile app, I say forget all the other solutions right now, except for maybe Xamarin, and go with Dart and Flutter, to be honest with you. I think Xamarin and, and Flutter have the most complete solutions for cross-platform. And the reason Dart becomes com compelling there is that once you get familiar with like writing Dart code for mobile, then you'll likely be really interested in using those same skills you've been honing, and there's not the context switching. Right, so now I can do like my web app because I know all the paradigms of Dart. But if you don't have the time or capacity for those things right now, then don't use something like this for production, right? It's, it, I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't do it. Uh, one other thing that JavaScript has going for it is the incredible ecosystem. Like, incredible. So someone's writing a wrapper for, for React and Dart, but guess what Dart doesn't support? JSX, which is half the appeal, right? Of React, is you maybe use JSX. So you have to use the traditional style of creating the object, passing in the children into each object. That already sounds bad. Yeah. All right, you're gonna pass. But with Dart, you got native support for Angular, because there's Dart Angular maintained by Google. So you kind of force into that camp. So yeah. So how does it? What's the UI layer look like? Because I don't think you showed. I mean, I can do it for web. You usually have HTML templates or yeah. JSX or something. For a mobile app, you wouldn't necessarily write that. Is it somehow? Is there like a shared, like a JSX for Dart that is applied everywhere? Or how does it work? No. No. The the UI layer for web and for mobile are, are completely different. So the the kind of the, all the logic is shared, but the UI layer. Right. Right. So I'm sure it looks material UI ish. Out of the box is material, but you can do Cupertino styled if you wanted to. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know TypeScript as well as Dart? Mm, I don't know it as well as I know Dart. No. Right. So if you have, if you're only doing web development, yep. All you want is the static TypeScript. TypeScript. If you know TypeScript and you're only doing web, you TypeScript. The value with Dart, literally, in my opinion, not endorsed by Google, I'm not a Google developer relations person. I'm just telling you that if you're doing multiple things, though, specifically if you're going to include mobile too, because Flutter has something really interesting that is not the right place for this talk, but they're actually building Flutter for web. So then you do get that cross <laughs> platform support where your web Flutter code and your mobile Flutter code are the same, and it renders native on mobile and it renders in web. You need to. So that's a really compelling. You, you know what? Thing. You should. You should, should come back again. <laughs> I, I, I come here a lot. So we, we we need speakers. I'm just saying. I yeah. mean, we could work this together. Yeah, it could be very interesting. Yes. Can you uh, tell us some other projects that have been built with Dart? Mm -hmm. I can tell you some other parts. So inside of Google, their flagship product is AdWords. Their money making app. Right, mm -hmm. funds fifty percent of the business. That's a Dart app. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they prove that you can scale it. Um, from the mobile side, there are a ton of companies that are using Dart and Flutter for mobile now. Like Alibaba is like doing it. BMW, uh, eBay, like lots of companies are starting to use like Dart totally as a strong. as one company called Totally Strong with a really bananas founder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, really fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So. What we're going to do is we're going to spend five minutes transitioning between Mark and Ernesto. Please feel free to grab Mark in the meantime whilst we do a swap. Get beer, get pizza, go pee. Five minutes. Right. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, Mark. You.